What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today we're going to be talking about cleaning the back glass. And as you can see, I'm halfway through taking care of this 300 gallon, and there's a pretty big difference between uh, being nice and clean and looking like crap. Now, yes, oh shit, ATO kicking on. It's been a while since I've made a video with my ATO kicking on in the background. Oh, good old days. Anyways, um, it's been a while since I've cleaned the tank. It's probably been about two months or so, and you guys have been asking me to go ahead and take care of it. And because the one-year update is coming up this week, I figured I'd go ahead and uh, do some work. And uh, yeah, so in this video, I want to talk about the pros and the cons of cleaning the back glass. And this is kind of a last-minute thing because the con is something that I don't think you guys really think about and not really something that I noticed really until I got into this system. Now, it was a little bit in the previous 125, but in this one, I've really noticed this con. So uh, the pros to clean the back glass, everybody can admit it looks a hell of a lot better being clean. So that's the pro. Now let's move on to the cons. The first one is it takes forever, at least for my tank here, getting down 30 inches takes forever. Now I do use this little cleaner, you can't see it's dark as shit. Okay, it's a little algae scrubber. Just go on eBay and type in aquarium glass cleaner. No, it's not food. Uh, and you guys will be able to find it. It's relatively cheap, like 12 bucks, comes with a bunch of blades, the extender arm. That's what I use to clean, as well as my Magna Float cleaner here. I use that to uh, kind of do some touch up. So between the two, cleans the glass pretty well. So the first negative is it takes forever and it's just a pain in the ass. So that's, that's about it. The second thing is the alkalinity spike. Now this is what I wanted to mention that people really don't think about. And that is over a couple days, I've noticed when I clean the entire bag glass all at one time, my alkalinity will go from a, the normal 9.5 to a 10.2. And that's within about 48 hour period of time. Now, if you don't test your alkalinity throughout the process of, you know, within the first couple days of doing your back glass, you're not really going to notice that fluctuation. And if you take, say you're not testing, but what, once a month, your alkalinity, usually about every other week, I like to do it. And if you were to wait two weeks or even a month thinking that your alkalinity was good to go, it might be too high based on that whole increase within a 48 hour period. Now, why does the alkalinity go up? Well, Coralline algae grows just like coral. They pull out one part calcium, one part uh, alkalinity to build their so-called skeletal structure. Now I consider coralline algae to be basically coral since it removes the same amount of stuff that coral does. And when you remove a lot of coralline algae, you have the same issue as if you were to remove a lot of coral. And that is gonna be the uh, increase in alkalinity unless you make the adjustment on your calcium reactor or your two-part solution. So what I've started to do is I break up cleaning the back glass over a three day period. So I'll do a, you know, one third, one day, the next day, and then the so on. Now I do this so that the alkalinity spike isn't as drastic. Now for most tanks going from 9.5 to 10.2 really isn't a big deal, but if you have a lot of Acropora, that is one of the number one killers of Acro besides temperature fluctuation is alkalinity. And if you are going even a, a one point increase over a short period of time, like 48 hours, can do a lot of damage to uh, Ac Acropora specifically. So that's why I like to spread it out over three days, monitor my alkalinity during that time, and then of course, uh, make the adjustment on the calcium reactor, dialing it down just a little bit, just to make sure that it doesn't continue to increase. And uh, that's a personal preference. And if you're running like mostly a soft core or LPS tank, or even just easier SPS, like a lot of bird's nests and stuff like that, style of forest, it's not really gonna be a big deal. But this is for you guys that are uh, really into Acropora. This is something that could potentially be an issue if you're not paying attention to it and taking care of it early on. Oh shit, even the mixer kicks on during my video. Well, I guess I better turn that off and I'll be right back. And we're back. So yeah, that's the mixing pump. Uh, for the water change that I'll be doing on this system tomorrow. It just kicked on automatically. It kicks on like every two to three hours for about five to ten minutes. And then, uh, you know, just to keep the water temperature and the salt water mixed up. And I just do that at least two or three days out before I actually do my water change. But, but yeah, that's awesome. That's like old school videos, just everything interrupting uh, what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, that's my whole uh, kind of my plan for doing the back glass. Now, what you can do to avoid that issue is just clean the glass consistently, maybe every week or every two weeks. But I always find that when I come in here, I'm always fragging coral accidentally. It, it sucks. So I don't like breaking my corals off. So that's kind of one of the main reasons why 
I tend to uh, push it out as far as I can. So we'll see. We'll see if I want to come in here and, and do it more consistently. That way I don't have the issue and it looks good all the time. But uh, no promises on that. Either way, that's about it for this video. I am going to have that one year update Wednesday or Thursday. And I have a lot of stuff going on with the planted tank, which you guys will see. Uh, it's a complete overhaul. I'll probably put a video out tomorrow just showing you guys kind of what's going on. But other than that, hope you enjoy the video and I will see you later. Peace.